Greetings and welcome back to the channel. It's for the first time coming across my channel. Please remember to subscribe. So today we want to come back to you and to talk about the India and Pakistan and the contribution also contribute to the UK society and economy. So I would like you to stay with me and watch a few clips and we'll come back and have a little discussion about it. How India and Pakistan significantly impact the UK economy. Sounds surprising? Let's dive right in. First, let's talk about trade. Did you know that the UK imports a wide array of products from India and Pakistan? From textiles to technology, these imports play a crucial role in everyday life. Think about your morning cup of tea. There's a good chance those tea leaves came from an Indian plantation or that stylish shirt you're wearing. It could easily be crafted from cotton spun in Pakistan. Now let's flip the coin. The UK exports a myriad of goods and services to India and Pakistan. This ranges from high-end machinery to financial services. This mutual trade helps create jobs and fuels economic growth on both sides. But it's not just about goods. The services sector is a heavyweight player here. The UK's financial institutions, like banks and insurance companies, have strong ties with their counterparts in India and Pakistan. This connection not only boosts the economy, but also strengthens international relations. Let's not forget about human capital. The UK is home to a significant number of residents of Indian and Pakistani descent. These communities contribute enormously to the UK's economy. Whether they are doctors, engineers or entrepreneurs, their expertise and hard work enrich the UK's workforce. Moreover, Indian and Pakistani students flock to UK universities every year. They bring fresh perspectives, cultural diversity and importantly tuition fees that help support the education sector. Many of these students go on to become valuable members of the UK workforce, further contributing to the economy. Tourism is another aspect worth mentioning. Tourists from India and Pakistan not only explore the scenic landscapes and historic landmarks of the UK, but also spend money on accommodation, food and shopping. This influx of tourists supports local businesses and creates jobs. Lastly, cultural exchange is a subtle yet powerful economic driver. Bollywood movies, Pakistani cuisine and traditional festivals have found a second home in the UK. This cultural blend attracts visitors and promotes local businesses, enriching the overall economic landscape. So, the next time you think about India and Pakistan, remember their surprising and substantial impact on the UK economy. From trade and services to human capital and tourism, these ties are more significant than you might have imagined. The UK has always been a hotspot for migration. From the Romans to the Normans to recent waves of people from all over the globe, Migration has played a huge role in shaping the nation we know today. So how exactly is migration influencing the UK right now? Let's break it down. Economically, migration has been a significant driver of growth. Migrants fill essential roles across various sectors like healthcare, construction and technology. These are jobs that help keep the UK's economy running smoothly. But it's not just about filling jobs. Migrants also bring new skills, ideas and innovation. This can lead to the creation of new businesses and even new industries. In fact, many of the UK's most successful startups were founded by migrants or their children. Now let's talk about culture. Migration has enriched the UK in countless ways. Think about the food you eat, the music you listen to and the festivals you enjoy. A lot of that comes from the blending of different cultures. For example, the Notting Hill Carnival, one of the biggest street festivals in Europe, has its roots in Caribbean culture. Events like these not only celebrate diversity, but also bring communities together. Of course, migration also brings challenges. Integrating new arrivals into society takes effort from everyone. There are concerns about housing, public services and social cohesion. These are complex issues that require thoughtful solutions. However, history shows us that societies are stronger when they embrace diversity. It's about finding the balance and making sure everyone has a fair shot at success. So, what can we look forward to? Will migration is likely to continue shaping the UK in exciting ways? As we navigate these changes, it's important to remember the benefits and challenges that come with it. In the end, migration isn't just about numbers or policies. It's about people, their stories, and how they contribute to the fabric of society. About the contribution 
in terms of culture and in terms of economical support. And also, there's many students to study here and they contribute a lot in terms of fees, universities and college um, fees, money they pay into the system to study here. If that is taken away from um, the economy, if that was taken away, they would feel the effect. Also, if you go around to different places in the UK here, you will see that 99.9% of the butchers that run the butcher shops is India and Pakistan and other places, Asian looking. 99.9% also, if you go into the old seals sector, they also run that. If you also looking into garments, textile, and also food. Uh, and when you go, <laughs> no mention politics and other areas. So these communities are very powerful in terms of the uh, input into the system. So if, you, if that was to be taken away, trust me, they would feel the effect. Actually, it would, it would be similar to when um, Idi Amin of Uganda the ex-president of Uganda in the 80s asked the Indians to leave the economy of that country crash not because um, the people could not um, run the business but it would take a while to restart those things that that they already um, started and advancing so I would advise um, the people who is being prejudiced and racist to adjust their behavior because honestly some of these jobs that they're talking about they they will not um, be able to do it i i seen the works and the way how the asian community work um and I'm telling you, they go an extra mile in terms of working. And um, the common man here in this country who born here and grew up here will not put in those type of hours. Also, they are very spoiled in terms of very regular they want to go for smoke break or what kind of break and very demanding and very challenging for employers. So that's why a lot of employers, including the Indian ones and Pakistanis ones and others employers, do not have them as a first preference because of the devious and devastated way or when they come into a particular business or a particular, they come to not to listen and learn, but to tell you how to run your business. Because most of the time, some, are, some people have a sense of entitlement. And um, if some people do not get their way, then it's like it, it's childish to start kicking and screaming. So... <laughs> But you and I both know that what I'm saying is truth. And, 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 and if you look around today, you will see that what is being said here is not fabricated. It's the reality of life that there is certain communities that is privileged and there's certain community that is underprivileged and there is certain community who work hard and stay together to build a community with themselves and that's why that's why sometimes they don't really interact with others because their 
in my opinion, they have a sense of focus and a sense of a goal and a sense of they've seen others like us being looked down on. So they don't want to be in the same position. So therefore they go that extra mile to outshine others. And this is why in several different sectors they're exhaling because they put in that extra hours, that extra mile and um, and have a goal in mind. So these are things we should uh, we should um, uh, take into consideration when we are uh, discriminating and um, describing someone. That would you do the things that they do? Would you go that extra mile the way they do? Would you eat? what they eat meaning a piece of bread and a biscuit and uh, and drink water for a year just to save up to start a business we like to criticize others but we don't see where we are going wrong we are people who like to be like to indulge well some of us there are people who like to indulge um, and indulgence is very dangerous. And so those other people now who make a sacrifice to create an environment, yes, well, uh, yeah, man, man, uh, to create an environment where the sacrifice is temporary. So therefore, a sacrifice is not forever. Let's say a sacrifice for five years where you only eat bread and drink water just to be able to, after that five years, drink wine. So think about what I'm saying. And thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And see you in the next one. Out.